And then I'll try to leave maybe like 15 minutes or so at the end for just open discussion or any other thoughts that you want to throw out there. We'll, we'll kind of go from there. So, um, the following slides contain activities designed for application of healthy eating concepts you've already learned. So it's it's review, it's just application. There's I don't think there's anything like jarring in here that you haven't seen before. And if there is, well, great, we'll talk about it now. So, um, all right, what I'm gonna have to have you do is since you ladies are kind of in the front, I'm gonna have you just pick one and we'll kind of go through them. Build a healthy meal. All right, so build a healthy meal. Now, for this class's sake, this is really simplified. It didn't make it like overly complex. It's pretty easy. Um, let me hand this out. Pass that up to your section. Pass that up to your section. So the handout that you're gonna get, um, it divides up the food groups. So it divides up the food groups into, um, it's got carbs on there, it's got fruits, um, vegetables, I think, proteins. Um, so the idea is that we're gonna build a healthy meal by choosing from each of those food groups. But you guys are gonna tell me how the meal is supposed to be built, okay? All right, so again, for simplicity's sake, we're gonna do it using the plate method. So you guys are all familiar with that, correct? We've gone over that like a million times probably. <laughs> Okay. All right, so first of all, if I've got a plate, what size plate should I be using? No. A very big one. A very big one. <laughs> okay. All right, so small to medium size is preferable. Maybe if you're training for a marathon, you have a bigger plate or something like that. But yeah, for, for weight management's sake, we're gonna go with small to medium size plate. All right, is there a, a certain way that you guys prefer that the plate should be divided up? Like, should there be half of the plate has got meat on it, or half, veggies. half has got veggies? Okay, um, I'm not gonna mess with all that because that'll take me forever to do. Okay, so just imagine that the line is down the middle, right? Okay, so half of it is vegetables. All right, what am I doing with the other half? A quarter quarter is protein. All right, what's what do I do with the last quarter? A healthy car. Okay, so let's actually build it. So half of our plate is vegetables. So give me some examples. Asparagus. Asparagus, broccoli, salad, salad, spinach, greens. Okay, what about corn? Starch. Good. All right, so where could we put the corn if we wanted it? <coughs> carbs. You put it in the carbs, that would be fine. <coughs> and you could still have, you know, the other half of your plate. You could still do but with vegetables and then also put the corn where the starch would go. That would be acceptable. All right, so we've got our, we've got our half of the plate. All right, so let's come over to the, the starch since we're talking about it. So we already know that corn could go there, especially this time of year if you want like a little any ear of corn or whatever, that would fit there nicely. What else would fit there? Ground rice. Ground rice. Okay. Sweet potato. Anything else? Quinoa. Oh, did somebody say beans? Yeah. Oh, okay. A quinoa. All right, what about portion sizes? I mean, now obviously you want to fit it in the court, you know, the quarter of your plate, but does anybody know portion sizes for any of those foods? About a cup. Half a sweet potato, half a cup. Yeah, that's good, yeah. All right, so we're missing the protein part now, correct? What do we want there? Size of your palm. Chicken. Size of your palm, very good. Chicken, do we want skin on, skin off? <laughs> you might prefer the skin on, but, but again, weight management speaking, probably of the skin off. Is there any other protein ideas? What about eggs? I mean, maybe that doesn't go with this meal specifically, or maybe it does. Um, but eggs could go there. Sure, you could do a lean cut of pork. Okay. Um, what are we missing? Do we want anything else? We've got, 
you know, we've got our fat, healthy fats here. Sure, okay, well let's start with the fats. You do want a little bit of fat at a meal. Does anybody know why? Something? Well, not necessarily, but okay, a couple things. Fat helps with satiety. So especially if you have a really lean protein, if you put a little fat with the meal, it will help keep you fuller longer. It helps slow down the digestion of the, the other foods that you're eating. Um, also, if you've got a nice half of your meal is full with these nice leafy greens, um, Fats help your body to absorb nutrients from vegetables. So it's a good idea, again, if you, especially if you have a really lean cut of um, chicken or turkey or fish and there's hardly any fat at all, it's probably a good idea to have a little bit of fat. So if we don't have any fat in the, hardly any fat in the protein, hardly any fat in the greens, hardly any fat in the carb, what, what should we add for fat? Avocado. Sure, avocado. Do we have a portion size for that? Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons? Yeah, it's like an eighth. For it's avocado like lovers, it's not. Teens. I know, I know. It's not much. I know. But yes, that would be appropriate. A fourth of a cup of nuts? Sure, you could do that. Yeah, if you're building like a little salad on the on half of your plate, if you want to sprinkle some nuts on there, that would work. Olive oil. Olive oil? Okay, olive oil. Yes, yeah. If you want to use that to, you know, um, saute your vegetables or make a dressing. Sure, make a dressing. There you go. Okay. Is there anything else missing from this meal? Water, cheese. Okay. Um, I'll address dairy first. So yeah, you could have um, a serving of milk or you know a yogurt or something on the side if you wanted to. Um, if you are somebody who doesn't do dairy foods, if you've got a nice serving of greens, you may have a good amount of calcium there. That's something you can look into too. Um, but if you don't have a lot of greens or a lot of calcium uh, rich vegetables, then yeah, you may want to consider doing some sort of dairy or dairy substitute. I also, did I hear cheese? Yeah, yeah, yeah cheese. okay, yeah. Cheese would also count as that. Like if you want to sprinkle some cheese on a salad or um, on your carbohydrates. And then there was one other thing that I heard. Water. 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 Yeah, you probably want something to drink. Or yeah, if you're going to do milk, milk would also count as fluids. Yeah, I have a question. The yeah. cheese is considered a protein, not a fat? Yes. Okay. And, you know, it kind of, I mean, it, it can go both ways, right? If there's fat in the cheese. So if you're, like, for instance, if you're doing a full fat cheese, then you probably don't need to add oil or anything else to your meal, right? Because you're going to get some fat in the cheese. So you kind of have to weigh out, too, what other foods you're eating in the meal. That's a good, that's a good point. Anything else with the meal? Okay. All right, let's go on to another one. right not I just I want to lose weight this year okay well that's not very specific do you want to lose it within six months 12 months how much weight what are you going to do to lose the weight right so you want it to be specific you want it to be measurable again how many pounds are you aiming for are you aiming for 10 are you aiming for 40 um, achievable you know is it if you want to lose weight within the next I don't know three weeks what is a reasonable goal 10, maybe, maybe not as much as, I don't know, five. Relevant and then tie bound. All right, so can somebody come up with a goal? And it doesn't have to be your own goal. It could just be an example of a goal. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to lose another 20 pounds before Christmas. Okay, 20 pounds before Christmas. 
So, all right, uh, is that specific enough, do we think? Okay, is, is it measurable? 20 pounds, he's, okay. Achievable? Yeah, I think that's, because what is it? It's August, November, October, December. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Four if you months. figure, yeah. So, yeah, that's about right. Yep. That's, that's, clinically speaking, that's a safe rate of weight loss, so that works. All right, it's relevant, because, yeah, you want to lose weight, that's your goal. Time bound, you have a deadline of Christmas. Okay, one suggestion, I would think about how you want to do that, right? So, you might say, I'm going to lose 20 pounds by Christmas by exercising three times a week. That would make it a little bit more specific. It would kind of pin you down to what exactly you're going to do to get to that goal, right? Or I want to lose 20 pounds by Christmas by, I don't know, increasing my, or uh, actually that's not specific either. Um, eating, eating three servings of vegetables a day. That would be more specific, okay? So when you have these goals in mind, that's a great goal. Just make sure you're making it even more specific exactly what you're going to do to get to that goal. Does that make sense? Does anybody else have a goal that they want to share? Okay. Oh, she's going to give me the diet. I'm going to give you an exact diet. That's some what I need to do. This is what you will eat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Label read. All right. So I'll hand out. All right, so you're going to get a handout of a label. I crossed off what it is. So there's no stigma about the actual product. I can tell you what it is after. It's not that big of a deal. Good, heart-healthy fats, okay? 
So yeah, it's a little high on the fat side, but again, coming from nuts and chia seeds, is, those appear to be the only major fat sources. So it's not coming from anything quote unquote bad, right? It's not coming from like, you know, processed chocolate or, or anything like that. All right, so then oh, there's no trans fats, there's no cholesterol, all right? We said the sodium was low, right? I agree, that's, that's very low. Um, it's got a little potassium, so that's good. All right, so let's come to the carbs and the fiber. Now, you all know that fiber is part of the carbs and sugar is part of the carbs, correct? Okay, so let's look at the, the sugars first. We said the sugars were okay. Usually I'll tell people to look for under 10 grams or so. So where's the sugar coming from? Fruit and what was? Honey. Honey. The juice. There's some juice in there. Okay. non-GMO glucose. Yes. Yep. Glucose is another word for sugar. That was a good catch as well. Citrus pectin is like a jelly. Yeah. Yep. And that, so that's carbohydrate as well. I tried to, some of the words, if you're not familiar with them, I tried to put stuff in parentheses. So, okay, so it does appear that mo probably most of the sugar is coming from fruit sources. And then, yeah, a little bit of apple juice, a little bit of honey, and then some, there is some glucose in it. So, I, but looking at the order of the ingredient list, I usually don't like to see any sugar within the first three to five ingredients and honey is the second ingredient. But again, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. So it's kind of, you know, it's one of those things where it's kind of up to you, it's at your discretion. But given that the, sh the total sugars is nine for the entire bar, so it's under 10, I don't think that that's, you know, I don't think we're breaking the bank with it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, all right, let's talk about the fiber. We thought the fiber was a little bit low, or what do you think? Me personally, I don't care. You don't care? Well, I'm gonna get my fiber somewhere else anyway. I'm probably okay. not eating this snack bar to get fiber. So. Okay, all right. So so for you, it doesn't really, it's not gonna okay. factor in. Yeah? I like more fiber because it keeps you full. Sure, okay. So she likes more fiber because it keeps her full. For him, it's not really gonna make a big impact on his total daily fiber intake. I mean, honestly, guys, I think this is pretty good given that it's a bar, it's a snack bar. Um, and again, your fiber's coming from your nuts, it's coming from your fruits. Um, the crisp rice, probably not much there. Uh, chicory, chicory root fiber, I mean, that's another type of fiber. So I. Honestly, for a snack bar, I think it's pretty good. Okay. All right, and then and then protein. Six grams. What do we think of that? It's okay. It seems decent. It's, it's what? It seems decent. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little I think more it's, higher, like eight or nine grams. Yeah, it could be a little higher. And so, where are we getting the protein from? The nuts. The nuts. The nuts. Yes. Yep, the flax. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it could be a little higher, but again, I don't think it's bad. I, to me, this seems like it would be a filling item since it has rich fats. It does have some protein. It does have some carb or um, fiber. So it sounds like it would be a filling snack for the 200 calories. It seems like you would get a little bit more bang for your buck. So, and then vitamins and minerals, again, that, you know, it's not a big deal, but there are some things, um, some vitamins and minerals in there. So that's kind of a bonus as well. So do you guys want to know what this is? It's a kind bar, it's a kind bar yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those kind of, though, did anybody see that those bars kind of got a bad rep like a month or so ago? I think the FDA kind of labeled them as bad because of the fat content. But again, we're looking at where the fat's coming from. Yes, it's a little higher in fat content, but because it's coming from flax, it's coming from nuts and you know, I just, it, it's not a black and white issue with that. So again, just trying to point out, you know, just because the numbers look a certain way, you know, come up to your ingredient list and see where things are coming from. 
if I didn't have the ingredient list and I saw that it was 12 grams of fat, I may have put this item down. But if I look at the ingredients and see, oh, well that's where it's coming from, that's a different story. So make sure you're reading all of the information, not just the numbers. All right. Okay, modify a recipe. So I didn't pick anything really crazy again. Try to keep it pretty, pretty simple. Let's try to make this simple. Okay, can you guys see this? Yeah. All right, you don't, it's the same on both sides. All right, so ingredients for a creamy beef lasagna. I tried to pick something that had full fat, full calorie, everything which actually is kind of hard to do these days because everything is so healthy, which is good. Um, all right, so we've got ground beef, we've got tomato sauce, onion, sugar, salt, Worcestershire sauce, garlic salt, cream cheese, sour cream, milk, lasagna noodles, shredded cheddar cheese, and parsley. Ideas for, or well, first of all, is this, is this look like healthy ingredients? Okay, well, what could we change? Okay. Everything. <laughs> I hope not the parsley, though, no. unless you don't like parsley. But. <laughs> the cream cheese, the sour cream. The cream cheese, the sour cream. Cheddar cheese in lasagna. Cheddar oh, cheese. It's going to be mozzarella cheese and ricotta cheese. Okay, so mozzarella and ricotta. Are mozzarella and ricotta healthier? No, they taste better. <laughs> well, um, yes, partially less salt. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, white cheeses tend to be a little bit healthier than the the orange cheeses. So, switching over to white cheese might might be a good idea. Um, and you said the sour cream and the cream cheese. Now, would you just mix those, or I what guess would you mine do there? Would be creamy. <laughs> okay, so she wouldn't do a creamy. <laughs> She's okay with mixing the creamy. So what? Well, what? If, what do we want to do if we keep it creamy? Greek yogurt. Greek yogurts and low fats. Greek yogurt in place of the sour cream. Okay. Greek yogurt in place of the sour cream. Um, what about cottage cheese, like in replace of like a ricotta? Yeah, you could do that. And they have, you know, depending on what you're looking for, you could do a low sodium cottage cheese, or if you're not looking for that, you could do a low fat or a reduced fat cottage cheese. Um, remember that you want to leave a little bit of fat in the recipe, but that, that might also be taken care of by the beef. Ground turkey. Ground turkey? No. Or a leaner cut of beef, yeah. That's a good point. If you ever compare labels, um, of ground beef to uh, lean ground beef to ground turkey, some of it's pretty comparable. So you don't, unless you have, you know, strict orders from your doctor not to be having red meat, um, you don't always have to have turkey and chicken all the time, especially in recipes like this. You can have a little bit of lean ground beef. Um, you skim milk, I guess. You skim milk? Yeah, it doesn't specify what kind of milk. You could do skim milk. Instead of garlic salt, you can do garlic powder. Garlic powder instead of garlic salt. Wheat noodles, whole grain or whole yeah, wheat noodles. Yeah. You could do that. What are, are there other substitutes you could do for noodles? Zucchini. Zucchini. Okay, yeah, that's pretty popular. Squash. You could do. Um, you could even like cut. You know, cut down on things too. Like instead of doing all ground beef, you could do some beans. Again, it's up to you if you like that in this sort of recipe. But you could do something like that to still keep the protein up, but cut down on the on the fat content. Beans tend to be a little cheaper than beef too. Um, other other things. Do you really need the sugar? Yeah, the sugar. I don't. I mean. I don't know. I mean, that's to me. That's a lot. Of, I mean, I know it's a whole recipe. To me, that's a lot of sugar for something that's not typically. Uh, Maybe they're trying to cut the acid. That's what my mom the said. Acid yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if what? it's a canned tomato sauce? You don't need. It probably already has it in. Yeah. Right. So she brought up a good point. So um, 
they may be using sugar to cut down on the acidity from the tomatoes, but again, if you're using a tomato sauce, it may already have some sugar in there. So again, you're getting added sugars in two different spots. Or use fresh tomatoes versus cans. Yes. Yeah, that's a really good one. Using more fresh tomatoes, you can bulk up your recipe that way, add a little bit more fiber. So it'll still cook down and make it saucy. Yep. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Anything else with this one? Okay. Let's keep moving. Plateaus. Okay, so this isn't really something that we talked about for this cycle. vague question, but I want it to be vague because I, it's open for interpretation. So, you've been stuck at the same weight for the past four weeks. You're not at your goal weight yet, so obviously you've got work to do. Alright, what do you do? Slowly bring your calories back up and then stay there for a week or two and then start breaking it down again. Okay, so she has a suggestion of slowly raising your calories for, for a week or two, she said, and then see if you can pull back after that. What do you guys think? Depends on your activity level. I had to raise my 1,200 wasn't enough. By the time I reached week 10, I stopped losing weight, and I did it the last time too. So, so I have to bring it up to like 1,300, in order to just maintain some sort of weight loss. Okay, so she was saying that she hit a plateau using 1,200 calories, and she had to bump up her calories to 1,350, you said? About 13 to 1,350. 13 to 13.50 and then she was able to jump start it. Did you have to eat No, but I already do it <laughs> So that's a really good point to bring up. Sometimes, actually a lot of times, I will see that. Um, members will join the program and they'll be really gung-ho and they'll want to just keep cutting calories and like taking it to the lowest possible amount. And that, it doesn't always work like that, which is actually a good thing. It's nice to be able to tell people to eat more as opposed to less. Um, but I mean, 1,200 calories is like bottom, that, that is like bottom, you know, and, and that's like for people who really aren't doing any sort of activity. And if you're in the Biggest Loser program and you are working out hardcore and you're on this schedule, you probably need more than 1,200 calories. So that's a really good point. You may be under eating and in, an, in a sense going into starvation mode. So your body is hanging on to calories instead of burning them. So that's a good point. You can try increasing your calories to see what that does. Other suggestions? Do different workouts, like more high intensity or just change it up and something different? That's a good point too. So she was saying, change up your workouts. Do you know? Do more high intensity, or or just do something different. Yeah, I agree with that too. If you've been doing the same workout for weeks or months, and you know, I mean, I, bump up your weights or bump up your reps, or you know, see if that helps. Or yeah, change it up and do something else. What do you guys think of that? Yeah. So yeah, if you've been lifting twelve, you know, if you've been curling 12 pounds for six months, you know, it's probably time to bump up, <laughs> bump up the weight a little bit, right? Because your body, you know, gets used to it. So once your body gets used to it, it's yeah. time to make a change. Inter oh, yeah, six o'clock can leave. Yeah. Interval training? Interval training. Yeah, that's important too. So um, if you're on the treadmill doing the same, just doing the same speed, you know, for, 60 minutes, 45 minutes, it's not doing a whole lot to get you out of different training zones. So interval training is really important. Yeah? You've been on a plateau for two years, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Go see the dietitian. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess I could do my plug here too for Epic. So they do have the metabolic test over there too. If you are, you know, if you've been doing the program and you feel like your diet is in order, you know, you're doing everything right, you, 
you're following everything that the trainer has been telling you to do, you've been coming to these sessions and you still feel like, feel like you're missing something, it, it is good to just um, take some of the guesswork out of it to have that test done to see where you're at. Now I will say I have had a couple people come to me with the test results that it's recommended something very low. So if you get something very low, please under 1200 calories, please either come see me or talk to your trainer because yeah, living on 1000 calories a day is not recommended. That's something I want to talk to you about. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, consider some of those things, changing up your workout, doing more high intensity intervals. Um, what about nutrition wise? Is there anything you can do? What if you tend to eat the same thing for breakfast or lunch, like let's say five of the seven days? Is that, is that a true thing? Like are you supposed to switch it up? So she was asking if you tend to eat pretty much the same breakfast and lunch meals five to seven days a week, does that make a difference? What do you think? Any ideas? <laughs> if, if you take it in aggregate, they're a good balance of macros and right micronutrients. I would work on it. Personally, I, I eat the same thing for breakfast. At least five days a week. It's okay. I, I agree. I think as long as they're balanced, and yeah, you've got all the right macronutrients, so your carbs, your fats, your proteins are balanced. Um, I think it's probably okay. My trainer always makes the notes, change it, change it, change it, and you run out of ideas after a while. It's done. Plus, it doesn't want you to get bored or tempted to cheat. Right. Yes. More so than he doesn't want you to be, he doesn't want you just to hate what you're eating. Right? Yes, and I will agree with that though. Because uh, I have one client who pretty much eats chicken and quinoa for every meal. and. <laughs> There's only so much of that you can do. Exactly. You get a little tired of doing that after a while. So the other thing to remember too is that there's different nutrients in different foods. So you do want to have a little bit of a variety. Like, you know, there's different nutrients in kale versus doing a different vegetable versus this fruit and that fruit. So you do want to try to get a little bit of a variety in your, in your, in your diet so that you're getting a whole array of nutrients. Okay. Other other things about how to how to get out of a plateau. Just really mark down everything you're eating, and maybe your next you know, or and watch the portion size too, because maybe you're overdoing it, you're eyeballing it, and all of a sudden it'll be more than I thought it was. Yeah, that's a really good point. So go back to the food journaling if you haven't been for a while. You know, maybe you've food journaled for a while and you feel like, ah, oh, yeah, I got this, or yeah, you, you, you eyeball and you're like, yeah, I know up to here is eight ounces or whatever. And then, you know, you start food journaling and journaling and you start measuring some of your foods and you're like, oh, I was doing a little bit more than I thought or a little bit less, or oh, that, you know, the candy started creeping in there more than I thought or whatever. So yeah, the food journaling, you know, as much as I know it's, you know, kind of a hassle for some of us, um, the food journaling really can be a great tool. So if you get out of that habit, it's good to do it for you know, maybe a week even just to see where you're at. Okay, let's move to another one. All right, so let's have you, sir. All right, vacation scenario. So I already know we've got one person in here going on vacation. All right, so you have an upcoming out of state vacation planned in two weeks. What sort of planning ahead will you do? How will you make healthy food choices traveling to and from your destination? How will you make good choices during your vacation? Thoughts? You can pack healthy snacks to take with you for your hotel room. Pack healthy snacks for the hotel room. Or air fare, wherever you want. Yep, and, and uh, you know, you can take food on the plane. I take food on the plane all the time. It just goes through the scanner. So yeah, you can plan for healthy snacks. Other suggestions? Exercise. Exercise while on vacation. Sure. Yeah, most, most hotels have a workout room. It may not be like 
know, crazy awesome or whatever. But I mean, and a lot of you have been working out enough now that you kind, of, you know, you kind of know a little routine that you can put together, or know safe things that you can do, um, or a little bit of intervals if they have a uh, a treadmill or whatever. Uh, yeah, and planning your your activities around activities, not just you know eating. <laughs> Not just, I know we want to lounge on the beach and have our cocktails or whatever, but try to have some activities in there or limit, limit the cocktails that you're having on the beach. Other suggestions? If you're eating out in a restaurant, look up the menu ahead of time and decide what you're going to eat before you get there. Yeah, so if it's a chain restaurant or if the restaurant has a website, you can look up the menu ahead of time to make some better decisions before you even get there. Eat a snack before you get to the restaurant so you're not starving. Again, it's you know it's probably a special occasion if it's vacation, so you, you want to have a good appetite, just not famished by the time you get to the restaurant. Yeah. I always make sure that the hotel has a meat fridge, so we only eat out once a day, and then we get a breakfast and lunch for sure um, by a clothing store where we are. Okay, we'll eat at home, so that there's at least two meals and I can make my choice of the meals. Yeah. Yeah, does everybody hear that I'm here? Yeah. So mini fridges, or you know, if you're staying somewhere really nice and they have a kitchen, yeah. I mean, you can do, I know that's probably not the most exciting thing to think about on vacation, but you can do a little bit of simple meal prep if you have a kitchen. And it would probably save you a little money. So at least if you want to look at it that way, it might save you some money. <laughs> and yeah, you don't have to cook like a big involved meal, even just doing a simple stir fry. You know, that's relatively quick to do. You can get the, the stir-fried vegetables already frozen in a bag, get a little meat or some beans or something and some oil and toss it in there. Other suggestions? Preventing that midweek, like, oh, oh no, I have nothing prepared for the week. We've got to do eating, yeah, pizza, restaurants until Saturday, Sunday when I make something else, if I make something else, right? All right, so what can we do to kind of help with this? I think meal planning is probably applies to everybody, right? Planning is the biggest thing. Suggestions? Shopping list? <laughs> Shopping list. So that you're not tempted to grab whatever off the off the shelf. You go with a determined plan. Yes. So keep a grocery list that you're going to stick to, right? Have it in hand before you get to the store, so you're not tempted by other things that you see on the shelf that aren't on your list. There's lots of apps out there too. I just downloaded um, Out of Milk. I don't know how to use it yet, but does anybody know of that one or use that one? It's supposed to save your master grocery list and you can check things off as you buy it and like your spouse can also see it. So like if your spouse goes one day and you go another day, they're not, but you know, you're not buying the same things over and over again. <laughs> we're laughing. He's my husband. He doesn't cook at all. All right. We're all right. We're all right. <laughs> I'm if it's just you. <laughs> Then it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, those of you that have nice spouses, that will share the share it. Um, okay, so anyway, there, there's apps out there that you could do, or you could just write one and photocopy it too. The other important thing to remember with your grocery list is um, have a running inventory, so you're not buying things that you know you go home and you're like, oh, I had a half a jar of that and then you're wasting money and you're having to throw stuff out because it's expired, right? 
So when you have a grocery list, have a master grocery list that you pretty much always need those things on hand and then you can add in you know, ingredients for recipes that you're gonna make for that week. And then yeah, use an inventory so that you're using stuff up in your pantry and not wasting money. What other sorts of suggestions or tools? There's a couple of cooking ones where you can say I'm going to make this and it sends you, like the app actually tells you the ingredients of what you need to buy and you can check off what you have. Ooh, that's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think it's recipes to go, I think is one of them. Recipes to go. But there's a couple of them that, yeah, you can pick menu items, like I'm making lasagna and it will give you the ingredients. It's, it's pretty cool. That's nice. So we think it's called recipes to go and it'll give you recipes and then you can, it'll check off as you purchase the things. And you can check on the to see what you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's really nice. It's a pongo. It's a so pongo. I've heard of that one. Other ideas? Sometimes, I'm oh sorry, oh. sometimes we double our recipe and then we freeze half of it so then yeah. when we can have it a different day when we're out of ideas. Yeah, I like that too. I mean, you now make sure you have freezer space <laughs> and make sure you have um, containers that are, you know, safe for doing that. So, but she was suggesting making a recipe and doubling it and then freezing it for later. That's a really good idea, especially if you're in a pinch and you're having one of those weeks where it's like, I have nothing, and then you have something stored in the recipe or a freezer. You had an idea? So I don't do this all the time, but when I have my act together, I do hate cooking, but if I'm cooking at night, I'll cook for like two meals at least, maybe three. Like if I have the grill going, I'm not just going to make the kids burgers. I'm going to have my chicken on there and turkey burgers for the next lunches. Or if I'm baking fish, I'll also have chicken in there. That way, at least the meat is cooked, and you can pretty much throw like you or anything. Your protein's there. But if I try to cook every day, it's not happening. It's just not. So that's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so trying to do a couple different recipes that require the same tools right. and maybe the same, right. um, some of the same ingredients at the same time. Right. Yeah, that can help save with time later. Um, or even doing like the crock pot's one of my favorite tools because you just throw stuff in there and go. I mean, so you could easily throw something in the crock pot, and while that's cooking, you know, then you throw something in the oven to bake, and you've got two recipes going at one time. And I wondered about that. I love that too, but every recipe I see is super high in sodium. Or you're adding to for a crock pot? For crock pot. So do you have favorite recipes or websites for? Uh, did Renee just give this one out? Somebody said she gave something. It's I know um, she gave one. Yeah, chicken salsa, black beans, um, corn, and then you can throw whatever else in there too. Like I just did one with quinoa. Okay. But I didn't add any broth or or salt or anything to it. And I I'm, I like recipes, but I don't follow them to a tea. I kind of do my own thing, but all I used was salsa. So now there's probably gonna, there's gonna be some sodium in the salsa, but at I least it's there vegetable. Are, there are books out there that are like crack pot recipes under 400 calories, 400 or 500 calories. And you know it's by low sodium broths. Yeah, low sodium broth, the, the, yeah. The no salt seasonings instead of salt, something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Mrs. Dash or just regular, regular, yeah, herbs, regular yeah. which have no salt, yeah. Yep, regular seasonings. Okay. Yeah. What I do for salads is I take all the greens and uh, cabbage and all that stuff and kind of chop it off and put it in a big bowl. Uh -huh. And then when I make my lunch, I'll just grab a handful of greens and then I'll add tomatoes and cheese and, and other things that I don't really want in that mix of greens. And then I'll okay. have to chop the salad. Okay. All that stuff out the That's a, a good one. Yeah, so she she prepares all her greens, maybe at the beginning of the week or whatever, mm -hmm. in a big container. And then uh, the day of, when and she wants to make her lunch, yeah, she just takes a bunch of the greens and then she adds whatever topping she wants to that specific salad. But so she's got all her greens prepared for yeah, a few I'll days. Yeah, and leftover chicken or pork chops or whatever, and then I have a little bit of protein in the salad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing I've had to do is like when you buy watermelon and cantaloupe, like actually cut it up the day you buy it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it just sits on the yeah. counter and then when you were looking like, ah, I'm not going to cut it, I'll just get something else. Yeah. So I actually like taking the time to do it and put it in Tupperware so then you could just say, oh, I'll have a snack of that versus yep. having to cut it up at the moment. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree, and that happens in our household too. If we don't prepare right away, it's like, yeah, we'll do it another day. And then you're throwing it away because exactly. now it's bad. And then yes, I have an avocado sitting on my counter right now. So. I did that with about five mangoes. <laughs> I just like, hey, God, mangoes were so cheap. I was like, I was buying a mango all the time. And I'm like, uh, I don't have time to peel it. Or whatever. Yeah. I was peeling more, but away because it wasn't really it was nice. And so yeah, it's going bad. Yeah. 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 Can I ask you a question since it's with this topic? Um, you know, trainers here really tell us protein, right? And again, if you're not a cook, that may not be readily available. But how do you feel about um, lunch meats or deli meats? I know that that's high in sodium and it's probably highly processed, but there are low sodium options now that mm -hmm. seem higher quality. Is that still considered like not healthy? Would it be better off to just not have the protein? Or to have, if I'm in a hurry, sometimes I grab that because I didn't have time to cook it myself. Yeah, I'd rather that you do some protein because if your if your meals are getting un imbalanced, then you're going to run into trouble with cravings and eating double portions later and energy problems and all that good stuff. So I'd rather that you do a little bit of lunch meat. The the ones that I like, Boar's Head is a pretty good one, and Applegate Farms is a pretty good one. I trust that one enough to give it to my daughter. They have organic meats, and they don't use all the nitrates and nitrites and all that stuff. Applegate Farms. Mm -hmm. Boar's Head. Okay. And Applegate Farms, I've seen that at Target, Woodman's, <coughs> Sendix. Boar's Head. Yeah, Sendix has Boar's Head. Okay. Does anybody else have ideas for good deli meats? Macuanico Meats has Boar's Head. Oh, where's the Buckwanagle? Uh, in the Buckwanagle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's actually called Bucky's. Bucky's, no, yeah. Bucky's. Bucky's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I think that's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, crackers and milk, right? It's just like when you start tracking it, it's like holy crap. Right. Yeah, so I'll have a beer and I'll have it all covered. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have reformed that mostly. The cravings don't go away, but but last night what? Rotisserie turkey breast instead of those things, and I can have a pile of it right. and still not run up a foul of the sodium level. Yeah, so, so I think it, you can you can find such. And the prosciutto might be a little bit healthier than doing bacon, at least. It's salty. Yes, it is salty, but might be off. Uh, 2,300 milligrams is really low. Have one slice. One slice. If you're having <laughs> 2,000 calories a day, it's hard to say. Yeah, liver yes. commits of turkey bacon is bacon. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> okay, let's do, let's do one more. And I think there was actually... All right, so Friday night, this is a common one as well. It's happening tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and it's Wisconsin on Friday night. So, all right, you're going out with friends. Friday after work, your friends typically like to have cocktails and appetizers. What sort of healthy choices will you make? If they're not supportive friends, how will you handle their comments? What do we think? Let's sit at it. <laughs> cool. Sit at a different table. Find different friends. <laughs> Find different friends. <laughs> well, this just happened to me a couple of weeks ago after a week at uh, Girl Scout camp. We always go out for drinks and dinner after a really week. And everybody had fish fries and beer and french fries. And I had a salad and water because we didn't have diet tonic. I thought, well, I'll have a diet tonic cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't, they didn't have it, so I had water. And I was perfectly happy with water and a salad. And I got four french fries from somebody else. And when I was all done, I still had french fries on my plate mm -hmm. because I was busy eating and talking. So she just I didn't focus on the food. 
Yeah, I really wanted a fish fry. <laughs> Somebody got big cod, okay. and then I thought, well, I could have done that, but I didn't think of it. Okay. And I only ate half the salad, and the rest of the salad was not safe for the book of you, so. Okay. So she, she went with the healthier choice. She got a salad, everybody else was getting fish fry, except for one got baked fish. Mm -hmm. um, you went with the healthier choice, and was okay with it. you were okay with it. Although you did want the fish fry, but you were okay with doing the salad. Were your friends supportive, can I ask? Oh yeah, they are. Okay, so she, got, she has a good situation. She's got yeah. supportive friends. That last statement there, if you're not supportive, how do you handle it? I don't think that's much of a challenge for guys. Because if our friends aren't supportive, we just don't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not an issue, really. I mean, yeah. they're not going to be supportive. It's predetermined, but we don't care. Um, healthy choices, I mean, for me, Friday nights we go out to Friday. It's a matter of on Friday nights, looking at my food logs, I tend to eat more calories than I do Thursday and Saturday. So just it's balanced over the course of a week or a few days. Yeah, so that is a good point too. I mean, at the end of the week, it matters how many calories in versus how many calories out, right? So I can't justify fish for but I can get a lot of something I wouldn't want to eat. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little too much fat, a little too much sodium, a little too many calories. So he doesn't worry too much about <laughs> Now, and I will say, I, and this is where it does get a little stereotypical. I think women women do have it a little different. We, we do tend to judge each other, I think, a little bit more, or make comments a little bit more, or a little bit more passive, maybe. Um, does any, any, any of the women in here have ideas for that? Because I have had clients that have told me that they do not have supportive friends. They, are, they say like, you know, oh, you can have that. Or, or holidays too, it doesn't have to just be for a Friday night. Holidays too, oh, just have, you know, oh, it's, you know, this, whatever, like brushing it off, like it's not a big deal. Maybe you could ask them, can I have your help? Can you help me, you know, to make good choices? Or, you know, I really need this help with you. You know, you kind of engage them in helping versus not just, you know. I don't think they need to be sabotaging. Right. They think they're just trying to have fun too, but if you can stress to them the importance of it, then maybe they would help you to make a good decision. Right, so yeah, making, engaging them, making them feel like if they're a part of the decision making or, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's likely that they're not a saboteur, hopefully. Some of us have family members that might be, I don't know, but, <laughs> but, um, well, sometimes they feel like if they don't offer it to you, that they're automatically assuming that because you are on a diet or whatever, they're making the choice for you. So they offer it because they're offering it to everybody else. Sure. They don't want to exclude you and have sure. you feel like, well, I didn't even offer it to you. Yeah. It's not necessarily a sabotage. When I say no, they go, I figured as much, but I still wanted all this no. Yeah, so she was just saying that, that again, it's not sabotage, it's just the person's being nice and saying, you know, if they're offering everybody else cupcakes. That, that cupcake or whatever, then yeah, they don't want to leave you out and make you feel like you're, yeah. <laughs> you're off somewhere doing something else. I think they just want to feel better about their own bad choices, so that if you're doing it too, they don't feel bad with their own. Yes. Some of us know people like that too. So she was saying sometimes people want to feel bad or better about their own poor choices. So they don't want to feel like, you know, they, they have to eat a chicken sandwich or right. they have to refrain from drinking. Right. They know that not like that a lot. Okay, so again, family. <laughs> so <Is that> <laughs> 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 no, so yeah, so she was saying that, yeah, they don't want to feel bad about their poor choices, and they don't want to feel like they have to make a healthier choice because you're making healthier choices, and you're probably sitting there like, really, this goes on, and yes, it does, it does go on. I believe it, I just don't experience it. Yeah. I find out, too, like, if you work in your plan, 
something. If you know you're going to go out that weekend, you do really good during the week and then your weekend. And then they'll say something to me like, oh, I didn't know you could have that on your diet. You know, oh, so that it makes you feel guilty that you're having it, even though you planned for it. Oh. And they're thinking like you're cheating or, or whatever. And so there's always comments though. Yeah, so she was saying, she, you know, you might be a little bit more rigid during the week so that you can have, you know, something on the weekend or whatever. But Especially then, at beverage, it's ridiculous how many calories are in a beverage, you know, an adult beverage, and it's like, yes. is it worth it? You know, I think I'd rather eat the calories than drink them, but yet, when you have a social <laughs> event, <laughs> you know, and okay, so that brings up another good point to keep in mind, and, you know, please don't, not that you're doing this, but some people do. Please do not pretty much starve yourself a whole day so that you can splurge at night. That's not exactly a good idea. I mean, again, yes, at the end of the day, it's calories in, calories out, but you can do some real damage making poor food choices, poor calorie choices. So even though you might stay within your calorie needs, you know, it may not be the best choices, right? And your muscles require different nutrients, especially when you're working out so hard. So even though you stayed in within your calorie needs for that day, you may not feel so good in the morning coming here working out or whatever. So keep that in mind too. It doesn't mean you should just splurge 2,000 calories on whatever. Any other ideas? You have to remember that why you're doing it. And you're not doing it for your friends or your family. You're doing it for yourself and just being adamant. When somebody says, do you want this? I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm fine, I got my water, I'm good, I got my salad, nope, I'm good, yep, this is working for me, whatever. Just making sure you stick to your guns regardless of what they say. Yep, so yeah, sticking to your guns. Um, Remember yeah. who you're doing it for. Yep, keep in mind who you're doing it for. You're, you're not there to please other people. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go home at night and worry about what you're doing, you do. So yeah, worrying about yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, just a couple of things since we're just about out of time. So a couple of reminders, a word on exercise. The um, American College of Sports Medicine recommends that we should be doing at least 150 to 250 minutes a week of moderate exercise for modest loss and then greater than 250 minutes of a week of moderate exercise for significant loss. So just because you're ending this program now does not mean you should become lax on your exercise regimen, okay? You will still require, if you are trying to lose weight or maintain weight loss, you will require a significant amount of time being spent. And it doesn't all have to be in the gym. I mean, you can go outside or do a workout at home, whatever, just make sure it gets done. So don't let that go to the wayside, you know, now that you're just about done with the program. And then a word on eating, again, same thing, no resting on your laurels. It is, this is a lifelong thing that you have to keep up with. You don't just hit your goal and then it's like, okay, I'm done. I mean, this is a lifelong thing you have to do. So sustainable weight loss is a complete lifestyle change, not a 12 week program. So this extends far beyond this this Biggest Loser contest, okay? So if anybody needs help with meal plans, questions in general about what you're doing, again, Epic, Spa, Epic Med Spa is there for the metabolic test. You can contact me, email me. Trainers are here for support as well. Renee is here for support. So good luck with the rest of the contest. I know you guys are neck and neck, or like three of your teams are neck and neck, so <laughs> good luck. <laughs> And have a good night. Yeah. 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 Yeah